hello hello and welcome or welcome back um, I am so happy to have you here happy pride month and yeah happy days so uh, before we start uh, I want to apologize for the lack of everything because uh, unfortunately it was testing season where I am and that means I had time to do nothing but studying. Um, it's still kind of testing season because school's ending in a couple of days for me. Not like a literal couple, but like a few days for me, you know? Like, we're, we're gonna be out soon. Um, but you know, I wanted to get this done um, before it ended uh, because I know that I'm gonna be doing a bunch more once school is out uh, because, you know, I'll have, I'll have more time um, on my hands. So, yeah. Um, now, before we begin, again, I have one thing that I want you to do. I want you, to, if you're not watching, like, ac actually watching already, towards the end, I want you to take a little look at the drawing I'm doing, because I really, really liked this one, and I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I would also like to note that everything in the photo, um, as in the pride stuff, um, is canon. It is stuff that either I already revealed about the characters or I just am like yeah it's out there have it you know not gonna keep it a secret at all you know um and I think that's it is that it yeah um now I'm going to get to reading and if you hear me um or, or during the story it's because I'm I can't read things clearly and, you know, you're just going to have to kind of deal with it because I refuse to go back and listen to my voice to edit this. So, yeah, that's great. Um, let's begin. Um, actually, you know what? No, first, trigger warnings for, like, blood and gross goo stuff and maybe, like, a couple other things. Just, just general, like, keep yourself safe, folks. Like, you know, I, I want you to be okay, you know? Um, and just know, um, I'm not the best writer on the planet, but I am trying, so I hope this is at least better than the original. Let us begin. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Rosemary burst out of her room, still trying to lace up her boots as she went. Of course, this ended up backfiring and her almost tripping down the stairs. She soon get it she soon gets it done, though, and rushes down to the bakery, grabbing her apron and quickly tying it around her waist in something that kind of resembled a bow if you looked at it the right way, and squinted, and maybe ignored what a bow was. Her brother could bug her all he wanted about how she woke up too late, but she always managed to be at least five minutes early. Still not as early as him, who was always like an hour early, but early nonetheless. "'Good morning, Rose. How are you feeling, Pumpkin?' Her father asked, giving her a pat on the shoulder as he walked by with a large tray of bread in one hand. I'm good, Dad. No nightmares last night. Rosemary cherished her dreamless nights, probably the most because even the best dreams had a tendency to go sour. Or at least, she felt like they went sour, even if they were good. That's good. Say, would you get me the garlic? Mr. Yancey ordered a double basket of garlic rolls, and your brother forgot to put it um, on my table. Rosemary nods, rush rushing off to try and find new bulbs of garlic. Rose walks into the cupboard, but can't seem to find it, yelling over to her brother Ulrich to ask where it was. He said it should be in there, but she groaned and told him it's not. He suggests that Chicory's probably got into it again. Rosemary wasn't the best of bakers, but she knew she was a good fighter and finder, just like her mom, so this was something she was good at. Rosemary knew exactly where to find chicory nests, and in fact, she had a suspicion she knew exactly where the garlic might be. Be back, Dad! she yells as she rushes out the door, quickly slamming into someone knocking them over. Ouch! It was her best friend Sage, who was now on the ground, rubbing her back. Oh, my God, uh, Sage, I'm sorry, here. Rosemary rushes to help her friend off the ground. It's quite all right, Rosemary, Sage says softly, just giving a chuckle and a polite smile. I don't break that easily. Now, what were you rushing out for? 
Sage asks as she stands up, towering over Rosemary. She'd always found it ironic that the girl who hated being noticed was always the one who managed to stick out in the crowd. Chiggery's in the garlic again. Rosemary huffs as she begins her walk, Sage trailing behind. Oh, well, I'm happy to help. My mom taught me that sleeping spell not too long ago, and maybe that would be some help? Sage whispers, as if she was afraid she would be too loud, as they entered her own family's cornfield. Perfect. Um, I can probably grab it, and you can put it to sleep? Rosemary grins at her best friend, who nodded with a smile, adjusting a large flower that adorned her bright blue hair. They made their way through the corn before finding a small opening where a line of garlic sits on the ground next to the sleeping creature. Rosemary was nearly ready to jump at it when Sage grabs, grabs the back of her shirt. Rose, that thing could wake up, and if they are, it's dangerous. You need to be careful, she says, hands shaking as her eyes connect with Rose's. Yeah, yeah, and I can outrun it. I'm fast, Sage, and I'll be able to tackle it eventually, she laughs, booping Sage's nose. Yes, you can, but I can't. Sage was a talented girl, smart with everything from magic to math, but when it came to anything physical, she hit a bit of a block. She couldn't run much before her asthma made her stop in her tracks, and her legs weren't helping the matter. Right, right, uh, you got a better plan? Rosemary asked, raising an eyebrow. Okay, well, then at least let me, let me walk away, and, and you can give me a signal when you're ready, okay? Rosemary nods as she walks off into the corn, which soon hides the fact that she had ever been there. Rosemary waits a moment before walking over to the garlic and scooping it off the ground. But to her surprise, the chicory doesn't move an inch. Rose walks up to the beast, nudging it ever so slightly. It was a stupid decision, but she knew she'd be fine. The thing just rolls over, only for Rosemary to find a hole where all of its organs were meant to be. While Rosemary wasn't typically grossed out by almost anything, this was a whole other level. Vines of ink black have sacks of dark glowing purple liquid, some of which had popped and mixed with the blood that soaked the ground. Rosemary had to stop herself from puking, dropping the garlic and dashing off, disgust being the only thing driving her. Well, that in fear. Soon, she she, she gets out of the corn, Sage quickly stopping her in her tracks. My goodness, R Rose, are you okay? Sage asks as Rosemary, as Rosemary puts her hands on her knees, sucking in a deep breath of air. There's, there's something wrong with it. There, oh, it was so gross. Rose shivers, thinking of the horrific purple pouches and blood, and the blood. Um, should I, I, um, I'll get my parents. The whole town knew about it, not even by the next day. Of course, this wasn't saying much, seeing that there was probably farms larger than their village. Rosemary had already been asked to do an interview with the town paper and was walking through the town with Sage to give to give the story. Sage held her hand, giving it a squeeze as, as they walked. Everywhere Rosemary looks, people are looking away or glancing at them and whispering to each other. It didn't make her uncomfortable. They weren't talking about her, they were talking about what she had seen. You nervous? Sage whispers, tilt tilting her head down. Nah, it's just it's just a statement for the paper. No biggie <laughs> She laughs, bumping Sage's shoulder. Yep, no biggie just talking about some creature that died because some weird infection that everyone's freaking out about. Sa Sage's eyes are wide and panicked. Her breathing had gotten heavy and Rosemary puts a hand on her back. Sage it's gonna be okay, she says soothingly, rubbing her back. Right, I just, it's, it's kind of terrifying, she says with shaky breaths. They arrive, only to find it wasn't just the usual town interviewer, but a set of elf, elves. Both were ex extremely tall, like taller than even Sage, and that was saying something. One looked around their age, despite their height, and the other looked far older. They looked quite similar, with the same with the same caramel skin, hazel eyes, and shockingly white hair. Rosemary had always heard that elves had white hair, but she didn't think it would be that colorless. Ro Rose and Sage take their seats in front of the interviewer as the elves stand slightly menacingly in the corner. 
So, Rosemary, these kind elf people are just going to watch the interview, okay? They might ask you a few questions, but other than that, they're just here to watch. Rose nods, glancing over at the towering elves, one of whom had gotten out a notebook. All right, sounds good. So, Rosemary, can you describe to me what you saw? She asks, putting her hand on her typewriter. Uh, all right, so, um... I was running through Sage's cornfield and blah 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 blah, ended up turning over the chicory, and there was just this hole in it. The elves nod as Rose pauses and takes a deep breath. And there were these vines of purple pus, and after that I just kind of ran away, she explains, still wanting to gag at the memory of it. All right, was there any pus on the ground? The older elf asks pulling out a fancy-looking pen. Yeah, and it was all, like, bright purple, uh, I think. I don't know if I already mentioned that. She adds, despite knowing that it probably was purple. Okay, and there were no babies or signs of other chicories, correct? The elf asks, scribbling things down quickly. Nope, the nest didn't have any of the, uh, glowy rune thingies that they bite into it? Yeah, and no, I don't- I didn't see any, at least, Rose explains, wiggling her fingers. The rest of the interview was mainly about how she felt, and if she was worried, and things like that. Rose was only half focused on the interview after she remembered that she would have to be at school for academy results tomorrow. Sage and her father had- had told her to write it down, but she had promised she'd remember. And technically, she just had- just, she had done it last minute. She didn't dare tell Sage that she had almost forgotten, though. Eventually, the interview was done, and Rosemary was more than glad, because her social battery had already been drained, and she just wanted to go to the hill and practice sword fighting with Ulrich. She'd gotten better than him a year or two ago, but it was still fun, because it was the only thing they could bond over anymore. They were really different at this point. They weren't so much as kids, but she, guess, she guesses people change. She said her goodbye to Sage, promising to meet her at, at school for the Academy results tomorrow. At the end of the school year, her and Sage, along with a couple of other kids, auditioned for the number one Guardian Academy in the Kingdom, and the third best Academy in the world. Rosemary wasn't all that confident. In reality, her sword fighting skills were good, but she was sure plenty of other people were far better. But Sage, on the other hand, was impressive. She not only used old magic, but she was also immensely skilled in elemental spells. Rose wasn't one for nerves, but this was something where her worst fears were confirmed. She wouldn't... she wasn't good enough. She decided to train with Alric to try and get it off her mind, but it didn't help much. She felt tired, and she knew Alric could tell that she was upset, but he wouldn't say anything. He never did. No one in her family did. It was a rule in her house. Well, not really a rule, just an unspoken agreement. You don't talk about it. It could be anything from mom to something random you're upset about. It just anything. She sure as heck didn't want to bother Sage with it, who was already dealing with her own emotions, so she just smiled. If she needed to be sad, she'd turn it into anger instead. That was easier. She laid in bed that night, staring at her ceiling, which she had been carving things into for years now. Her art wasn't that bad anymore. Sure, it wasn't Dad or Ulrich's, but it was getting there. Her eyes landed on one carving, not done by her, or her brother, or her father, and instead the one and only one done by her mother. She feels pain grab her chest, so she turns over, promptly allowing herself to ignore it. And think about it, maybe tomorrow? Fear. Nerves. Still better than being upset. Uh, so that was chapter one. I hope that was fun. And actually, I think I'm going to do chapter two, which is actually from Sage's point of view, because I thought it would be really fun if, um, you know, you got points of view from Sage and Rosemary. I don't know. Uh, I might do. There are also going to be points of view from other characters, because I think that's just super fun. But who knows? I don't know. Uh, anyway, here we go. Chapter two. Rosemary is already standing on the steps, jumping up and down and waving wildly at Sage. Her pink hair is pushed back by a white headband, and she's wearing a plain shirt and a skirt with navy blue leggings that Sage's mother had made for her. Rose didn't wear skirts often, but she rocked every single one she did wear. 
Somehow Rose was also able to pull off her hair that was extremely choppy due to cutting it herself two months ago for seemingly no reason. She didn't tell Sage why, but Sage assumes it was probably one of her off-the-whim off decisions that she now regretted. Sage! Rosemary waves, jumping up jumping down the stairs and running towards Sage. Rosemary had to be one of the most physically bouncy people Sage had ever known, and she loved her for it. Hey, Rose, she smiles, taking more shaky steps forward as Rose runs up to her. Oh, I'm so excited I could pop, she exclaims, jumping as she says so. Me too, and nervous, mostly nervous. <laughs> she laughs, taking deep breaths and getting herself under control a bit more. It's fine, Sage. You've got this. Come on, let's go and get good seats. They walked into the school, which was crowded with their fellow first years. Or at least, the people who would be their fellow first years if they didn't make it into the academy. They were the people who had been in, in Sage and Rosemary's last grade, but because of the town's small size. They make their way into the auditorium, taking seats at the edge near the front. Sage laced her fingers with Rosemary's, taking deep breaths. She had been doing well all day, but now her chest ached and she felt like passing out. Rose puts a hand on her shoulder and she leans against her, trying to calm her nerves. Do you think we're going to make it? Sage asks as Rosemary rubbed her arm. Of course, Sage. We've got this. Sage wasn't sure if Rosemary was saying that to make her feel better, or if she genuinely felt that way. Sometimes it was a little hard to tell with Rose. But what would happen if, if only one of us gets in? Sage panics as the auditorium door is shut. Well, then we'll fire message and visit each other on holidays, and we'll make it work. We're gonna keep being friends, okay? Rose's tone softened, no longer the loud, extravagant sound that sometimes made Sage a bit anxious. Quiet, everyone! Headmaster Ramira calls, making everyone fall into hushed tones. We've got this, Rosemary insists with a thumbs up and a grin. This year, we had 13 brave students try out for High Guardian Academy, but only two were skilled enough to get in. The first got in due to her amazing sword fighting skills and physical capabilities. The headmaster pauses, making everyone's heart, hearts begin to race before shouting, Rosemary Evertone. Rosemary bolts out of her seat the moment the R is spoken. Sage slams her hands together until they go numb. Rose stands on the stage, grinning and waving to everyone who cheered. Please, Sage whispers, grasping her hands in a prayer. And for our second and final, this person has not only showed fantastic ac academics and impeccable magic abilities. Sage Runapel. The crowd erupts in cheers and once more, and it was all she could do not to trip o over her own feet on the way to the stage. Sage was immediately wrapped in a hug from Rosemary, who was who was practically bursting with excitement. Both of them were handed thick envelopes, both sealed with beautiful purple purple wax with the mark of High Guardian Academy. The headmaster congratulated them thoroughly, and their classmates all cheered for them, despite half of the people in the room saying they wouldn't make it when they tried out. Sage smiled so hard for so long her cheeks hurt, and it was all she could do not to cry out of pure joy. She and Rose are led off the stage as headmaster Ramira begins explaining how people, how people could try out for other programs at this school next year, and how they could take extra courses or do other things instead. No one was really paying attention because what they came to find out was over. Sage was Sage hugged her letter close to her chest, as if as if it would disappear if she let it go. They're eventually released from the sticky, hot auditorium out into the late summer afternoon. Rosemary chucks herself into a tree right outside the school's front doors, people staring at her as she does so. Sage settles herself into a spot in the crook of the tree, using the chipped part of her prosthetic hand to open the letter. Ugh, I have to get a bunch of history books, Rosemary says, looking down at Sage. Me too, but it's not just history books. It's books on all sorts of things, she says, biting her lip. She wonders if she could get them from her mother's old stash, or maybe borrow some from her cousin Alzara. Uh, it also recommends a terrasphere. Sage heard Rosemary let out a small gasp. You think your mom will buy you one? She asks, her bright blue eyes going wide. 
Probably not. It's only recommended, so there's no point on spending that kind of money. Sage had never had any desire for a terror sphere, because she had always felt more connected to old magic than new magic. It just never felt quite right every time she had had an opportunity to try it. The one time she had gotten to try it on a school field trip, it just felt off. Hmm. My letter says everyone's going to be receiving a weapon from their family, but, uh, mine's already there? Rose furrows her brow, staring down at her letter. Maybe Dad sent something already? But no, he doesn't even know about this yet, huh? Rose pulls on the strands of her hair. Ugh, at least she couldn't chew it anymore. I don't know, but apparently we're gonna have an ethics class according to my schedule. Why do we need a class to learn our morals? This seems dumb as fu- She puts a hand to her mouth. Sorry, Sage. Rose mumbles as Sage shakes her head. It's fine. Uh, what, what time do you have ethics? Sage asks, looking at her base schedule. Uh, says I have it second bell? Sage begins to grin immediately after she says second bell. If you've, if you've got M Madame Sullen, we've got the same ethics class. Rosemary lets out a, a whoop, swinging down and hanging by her knees. Thank God I won't be separated from my dearest friend, Rose shouts overdramatically, giving her a kiss on the forehead as she hangs upside down. I don't know what I would do if we were separated for so long, Rose exclaims, putting her hand to her head as she pretends to pass out before raising herself back into the tree effortlessly. Yes, and at least I'll have you to dull the pain of an ethics class, Sage laughs, playing into Rosemary's game. Indeed. Anyway, uh, I've got to get headed home. Dad needs my help in the bakery this afternoon. Rose sighs, standing on the branch and launching herself from it, doing a flip in the air like an acrobat. Rose had a tendency to do risky things like that, but she had done it so many times that now Sage didn't flinch as much anymore. Rose waves as she runs in the op as she runs off in the opposite direction. Sage heaves herself from the ground, legs aching. She probably should have brought her crutch today, but she had been in a rush this morning. She stops by the shop to pick up some of the spices her mother had requested. She also bought an orange for herself as a reward. She gets hung up at the counter where the store girl, Callie, talks her ear off for a good hour before someone else walked into the store and needed help. She didn't realize how late it had become until she saw the setting sun. Sage silently cursed herself for her poor time management and began making her way home. Sage arrives home to find her mother crocheting in the kitchen while a pot bubbles on the stove. Sage sets down the paper bags and her mother thanks her. So, Mom, uh, I've got news. Sage grins, biting her lip to hold her excitement. Go on. Her mother looks up with a soft smile. I got into High Guardian Academy. Sage pulls the letter from her pocket and sets it on the table with a grin. Oh, baby girl, I knew you would! Her mother stands up, wrapping her in a tight embrace, tears slipping from Sage's eyes as she does so. She waits patiently for her father to return from the field, not able to think about anything else, barely able to focus on her cross-stitch or her mother's story about her school experiences. Sage's mother only went to school till she was around 14, so she was quite keen on Sage getting a good education. Sage getting into High Guardian was like a blessing straight from the gods for her mother, and for her too. Hey, honey, uh, what's cooking? She hears her father's voice and immediately bolts out of her chair, grabbing her letter and walking it to the living room before her father could make it to the kitchen. Ah, oh, hey, honey. At first glance, no one ever believes her father is a farmer. He's a rather scrawny-looking man with yellow eyes like hers and glasses pit pitched on his thin nose. Dad, I have something to show you. She wasn't even pretending not to be excited. What's up? He asks, putting his hands on his hips, in what she liked to call the dad pose. Look! She grins, holding out her letter. His face immediately bursts into a grin. Her father was so proud that right after he changed out of his work clothes, he rushed back out to get her a gift, which she assumed was going to be cake. Her mother chuckled, shaking her head and telling Sage not to be as spontaneous as her father, but Sage knew her mother loved it just as much as she did. Her dad did, in fact, arrive back with cake. But he also brought with him a box. He said she could open it after dinner, which he arrived just in time for. All through dinner, she kept glancing over at the box, wondering what in the world could be in it. 
After dinner, her father placed the box in front of her, and she gladly opened it to find a beautiful black traditional witch's hat. It was just like her mother's, soft and silky. The only thing missing was the flowers adorning it. Thank you, Dad, she says, wrapping her arm around him. Looks like we're going to have to get you some decorations, her mother says as she presses, presses one of Sage's potions into her hand. Can I have peonies? Peonies were Rosemary's favorite flower. Just like her mom, she wanted flowers on her hat that reminded her of her friends and family. You can have anything in the garden that you want. You could have a squash if you wanted. Her mother laughs as Sage gulps, gulps down the potion. As she enjoyed her cake, she wondered how Rosemary was celebrating her victory. Because Sage was ce celebrating it in a very fun manner, in her opinion. Rosemary arrived arrived home after after dinner had already begun she hadn't planned on taking a detour but mr kelps had roped her into helping him with setting up phantom traps she had twigs and leaves down her shirt and in her hair she still had her letter in one of her belt pouches pulling it out the moment she walked in the door dad ulrich she yells as she bolts into the kitchen slapping down the letter oh my gods ulrich says reaching for the letter as she hits his hand away Rose, this is amazing. Wow, I, I don't even know what to say. Her father gives her a hard pat on the back as she takes her seat across from him. Ugh, they've, they've already got a weapon, eh? He mumbles as she begins chewing her peas. Gee, Rosemary, you're getting closer to being like Mom every day, Ulrich says, elbowing her playfully with a laugh. Hell yeah, I am. The rest of the night was, for her, was spent by her father lecturing her about what she should and shouldn't do at school, while Ulrich told her that she, did do, she should do all of those things and that, that Dad told her not to. As she laughs at her brother, who told her she should totally jump off the school roof onto a broomstick, she wondered what Sage was doing. And that is all. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 will be us finally getting to the school and, you know, doing our thing. This was mainly just to set up character stuff and show how Rose and Sage act in the village to kind of set up, you know, how different they might act um, in the city and stuff. So, yeah. That's all. I hope you have a fantastic day. I would love it if you would like and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!